Today we're looking at phrasal verbs with two. Now, there are loads with two. There's no way I've got even close to half of them or any of them. This is just some of them. So we'll start with be or get up to. We very often use this with kids when you ask them what they're doing and you say, what are you up to? What have you been getting up to? And we're talking about what have you been doing, but it sounds like maybe they've been doing something a little bit naughty, a little bit suspicious. And so it could be, it's not always, but it could be used in that sense to be doing something naughty as well. They were getting up to something, they were doing something naughty. Um, but or just neutrally as do. Now we can also say we look up to our heroes, our role models, because we, when we say look up to, we mean admire. So you might say, I look up to um, this poet as a as a great uh, as a great writer. Okay, look forward to. Everybody should be familiar with this because it's at the end of so many emails and letters. I look forward to hearing from you. Please remember it's a gerund after look forward to because this is a preposition. It's not two plus infinitive. In fact, all of these will be gerund because these are all phrasal verbs. They're not two plus infinitive. Okay, um, so yeah, you look forward to hearing from someone. It means you're excited about getting a reply from them or you look forward to Christmas. I'm looking forward to Christmas. It will be nice. Nice time of year. So if you make it up to someone, you have done something wrong and you want to compens compensate them for your bad deed. And so you want to make it up to them. Um, so, for example, I missed a lesson recently with a student and I decided to make it up to that student by making a video um, on a theme which that student would enjoy. Um, but I must admit it's a theme which all students uh, find necessary anyway, so it was useful for me too. But this would be to compensate, yeah? If you put a question to someone, you pose that person the question. And you can even say, I put it to you that, meaning I propose, I suggest that. And it's really quite a formal phrasal verb. Um, if you see to something, if somebody says, oh, uh, maybe one of your friends says, um, oh, I forgot to pick up that document from the post office. And you say, don't worry, I'll see to it. It means, don't worry, I'll take care of it. I will do it. I will sort it out. Okay, so to see to something, it just means to get something done, to sort something out, to do something. Very often used with errands and tasks. So I will, yeah, uh, saying something like this, after seeing to the shopping and the cooking and the cleaning, I went out and saw some friends. That's fine. It means after sorting all out all of the shopping, the cleaning, the cooking. OK, so it just means get something done, get something organized to see to something. And you could even see to someone, meaning take care of someone. Um, if you are seeing to um, your auntie, it means you're looking after your auntie in some kind of way. You're taking care of her, uh, taking care of her needs. OK, if you stick to a schedule. Oh, look at that. That's terrible spelling. If you stick to a schedule or an arrangement, um, or you keep to an arrangement or keep to a schedule, it means you don't, I mean really I think this is more verb plus preposition than, than phrasal verb. It means you don't, um, go, you don't go off that arrangement, you stay exactly as it was agreed, you stay to all the points of that arrangement, or you, you keep to the schedule exactly as it was planned, okay? You don't go away from that schedule. You don't get delayed. Okay, if you take to something, you could take to swimming very quickly. And that would mean that you found it very easy, as soon as you were in the pool, to pick up swimming. So when you take to a new skill, you pick it up really quickly because you find it easy in some kind of way. You find it easy to adapt to. Um, so you could take to any new skill, really. Um, but you can even use this word take to, meaning to begin a new habit. And so you might say something like this. Um, my wife has taken to going for an early morning jog. Yeah, um, in, in the week. Um, it just means she started that new habit. She has taken to going for an early morning jog. She's taken to running in the mornings. 
Okay, if you turn to someone, you turn to that person for advice. You consult them for advice. Um, and it's very often used when you are in a difficult situation and you turn to someone for help. Um, but it could also mean to turn into. I mean, one color can turn to another color, yeah? And it just means it's changing into another color. Okay, if somebody comes on to you, that means they are hitting on you. They are chatting you up. They like you in some kind of way and maybe they want your phone number, something like that. They're coming on to you. I think that's quite American, but um, <laughs> you'll hear it here as well in the UK. Now, if you face up to your responsibilities, that means you accept them and you're ready to to take uh, to take responsibility. Um, so this one just really means uh, to to be equal to those responsibilities and to accept them. It's like accept to face up to something. Very often you face up to a difficult situation and it means you accept that difficult situation. If the holiday, maybe the resort that you're going to on holiday, if it lives up to your expectations, that's usually something positive. It means that the high hopes you had for it, it lived up to those high hopes. It lived up to the, your expectations. It reached your expectations. Now, if you stand up to someone, you defend yourself against someone. So you might tell children, perhaps you should always stand up to bullies, something like that. Now, if you drink to someone, that means you make a toast to their health. OK, that's what it means. You could say, let's drink to Andre, who's been a very good friend of mine for a long time. Yeah. If you come up to someone, it means just direction. And you can also say, come over to, walk over to, walk up to, drive up to, drive over to, ride up to, ride over to. And you can even use this with other words like cozy up to someone. It means um, cuddle up to someone. They're very, very similar, cozy up to and cuddle up to. But it's still direction. It's still going in that direction. So please remember this up to in the sense of approaching. Now, if we say comes down to or put something down to, we're ascribing causes. We're talking about why something happened. We're giving reasons for why something happened. So we might say um, global warming comes down to um, the sun. Yeah. And then we would mean that the reason why the planet's getting hotter is because the sun's getting hotter. And so we're saying that it depends on the sun. It hinges on the sun. Yeah, we use it to ascribe causes. But we we could also put it like this, yeah? We could also put it like this. We could say, I put global warming down to the effects of the sun, okay? Solar, solar effects or solar cycles or something like this. And you're saying that the cause of global warming is... That's what you're doing. You're ascribing causes. Very common, these two. Very common. Please learn them. Please use them. Now, if you bring someone to, you help them regain consciousness. You bring them to. Maybe you use some kind of very pungent aroma and you um, put it under their nose and you bring them to. You can also say bring them round, but you can say they, you, or you can say they came to. They came to. When I, when I put the smelling salts under their nose, they came to. They regained consciousness. They came round. Also possible. But you could say, all of my shopping today came to £15, yeah? And it means all the different items added together, they come to equals. That's all it is, come to equals. Now, if you put someone up to something, you make them do something. It's quite often negative, this, but you, maybe uh, you decide that you, I don't know, this, difficult one to give examples for but um, perhaps I think very often this is with youngsters a youngster might try to get out of being punished by saying that another youngster put them up to it yeah so let's say that he, a youngster might say I stole a sweets but it wasn't my idea he put me up to it he made me do it he put me up to it yeah and that would mean he he made me do do this so it basically makes someone do but very often used with youngsters if you get around to doing a task you find time to do that task um, so we all need to uh, we all need to get around to doing some things throughout the day we have our list of stuff to do and if we don't we'll say oh I, uh, I did everything today but I didn't get round to fixing the car something like that I didn't find time to 
Okay, if you get back to someone, you very often call them back. You basically return some kind of contact. You could get back to someone by email or by letter as well. It doesn't have to be a call, but very often it's a call back. But you can also it can also mean return to something. So let's get back to the main topic two phrasal verbs yeah it just means let's return to the main topic if you get to the shops you reach the shops but if you say to somebody don't let him get to you very often it means don't let him upset you he's been trying maybe he's been getting at you he's been saying bad things to you he's been putting you down and i say don't let him get to you okay if you get through to someone maybe you just reach them in the sense of by by phone you've been trying to call them all day and eventually you get through to them but it can also mean to make someone understand something very often something emotional but um you might say um i've been trying to explain to my son that he shouldn't do this but it's so hard to get through to him yeah it's so hard to make him understand okay if somebody talks down to you they patronize you yeah they talk to you in a disrespectful way like you are inferior to them in some kind of way like you are down there and they are up there okay i think that means we've covered all of them please if you have any questions about two phrasal verbs put them under the video i hope to see you all soon